everybody. Welcome to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to go over here and click the subscribe button. It's actually button, on the other and side. And also hit the bell and hit all notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram under the Faithful Farmer Mama, the Portillo Homestead. I'd love to have you there as I share many of our pictures from the days that I don't normally do videos. So this morning, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to prepare something in the kitchen. So some recipes are very intimidating. You see these people on Instagram and Facebook and also in on Pinterest and you're like, oh, that recipe looks so yummy, but it's very intimidating and scary. That's where I come in because recipes are scary or you think they're scary, but really they're not. So we are going to actually make homemade biscuits today. Um, using a sourdough starter. So let me tell you first a little bit about a sourdough starter. Um, I actually have a starter started that I've had for probably about three months now. My 13 or 14 year old, she was 13 at the time, had to start a sourdough starter for, excuse the clock, for um, a science chemistry class that she's taking. It's called Chemistry in the Kitchen by Good Hollows. She absolutely loves it, but I kind of fell in love with her starter. So we've actually named our starter. His name is Steven. Uh, our starter is sitting in a bowl, and this is our number two because the first one I destroyed it. Um, and after reading a lot and listening a lot to a lot of bloggers um, about sourdough and how important it is to like when to use it, what to do with it, it has been a life changer for me. So I got my recipe from Guest Hollows. However, I've altered it a little bit using all of the techniques and everything that um, Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone, I will link her YouTube page below as well. And I'll link the sourdough starter video that she has. Um, I've actually used a lot of her stuff in a lot of her recipes. She has a million recipes on her YouTube channel and I absolutely love them. So I am our sourdough starter. I had it on the counter, didn't keep it warm, didn't even think about the countertop. We do have a, um, a granite and it is cold all the time. So I didn't think about that. So our little starter actually sits on a little rack and he actually has a scarf that's pinned together with some clothespins to keep him warm. We are, and then I, I cover him with a cheesecloth so he still can kind of get air but is still protected from things like bugs and stuff that's floating around in the house. So we're gonna actually use this a little later. If you notice, he's in a glass bowl. Never want to use metal um, in your uh, starter. So I am really particular. I use glass and I use a wooden spoon always, 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 always. So this glass bowl is actually from Pampered Chef. It's there's a set of three. These are my favorite bowls of all time. I have two sets actually, and you can actually purchase these amazing covers that go on them. Um, so if I need things to rise or I need to bake in this, I can actually pull this little tab here or let it to air out. And this will actually um, go in the oven because it's silicone. But I also use it when I'm storing stuff in the fridge. I will just put the cover on, put it in the fridge and then pop things in the oven. So I just wanted to share those with you because they are phenomenal. So I am using, of course, my recipe went away. Um, I am using, uh, I'm gonna to have to do it by, by memory, I guess. I'm using our glass bowl, and in our bowl, I'm going to mix two cups of unbleached flour and a cup of sourdough starter. So one of the things that I've kind of changed over time, I only use King Arthur flour. It's the only flour, the wheat, the whole wheat, the white wheat, and then the all-purpose. It's a little bit more expensive, but it really makes a difference when you're cooking. So um, I'm gonna move this. And I'm going to use a cup of, oops, I'm going to use a cup of all-purpose flour and then I'm going to use a cup of whole wheat flour. Um, I am using a Pampered Chef measure cup. I, I used to sell, well, I sell Pampered Chef. I'm not as full-time as I used to, but uh, so a lot of the stuff that you'll see, you will see that I use Pampered Chef stuff. And then I'm going to do a cup of wheat. I'm going to add a little bit more because it didn't look like a full cup. This cup set actually comes with a whole bunch of them and it has a leveler, but I don't always use it. And you're going to notice that when I'm cooking, I don't really measure a lot. Um, I just kind of scoop and go as I go along. 
teaspoon, also for measure, uh, Pampered Chef. This is actually a teaspoon down to a, an eighth of a teaspoon, which is really cool because you just move this little thing here. So I need a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking powder. So I'm going to add those in here. Baking powder is over here. I don't have a fancy little glass one for this one because it came, comes in this cute little tub. So I actually just leave it right in this little tub. So does my cornstarch and my baking soda as well. So in this, now here's something that you're going to learn about me too. I don't like to use utensils to mix things. My father was a baker for a really long time, and I always remember him in the back of the bakery using his hands to make things. And it's not that they taste any different, it's just it's easier to mix sometimes. So sometimes that's just kind of what I do. So we are going to take half a cup of butter, and we're gonna actually mix it in here until it's a large crumble. Now, I will give you a hint, a stick of butter is a half of a cup. I just pinch some off, Stick it in here, make sure it gets covered by flour. Now, a lot of the recipes that I've looked at with biscuits, it will tell you to use a pastry blender for this part. I don't do that. Um, I just mix and mix and mix until it's all crumbly. If you notice this pastry mat that's on the bottom of here, that's what we're gonna turn our uh, biscuits out when we cut them. I got this also, guess where, um, I use it often for kind of to, kind of to keep things off the counter just so that I'm not picking up all the, the crumbs and stuff that are on the counter, but it's a great piece to be able to use to roll out like sugar dough cookies or if you're making bread and you need it to rest on the countertop, you know, just in, if you don't have it in a bowl, if you're just mixing by hand, um, I just leave stuff right there on this and then I just cover it, which is really awesome. So, okay, my hands are gonna be a little dirty for the rest of this, so I need, I really could use my recipe, I think I need a half a cup of buttermilk. And I'm gonna get a cup of our sourdough starter to mix into here. Now, one of the key, Sorry, I had some fermentation up on top of this and I wanted to make sure that I had what I needed. One of the key elements in my sourdough is that you would um, make sure you get the right amounts. A lot of times I think when recipes are given, it says a cup and then we don't think about it, we just kind of scoop, but sourdough tends to be sticky. Um, so there's that and then I will feed him right after. Yeah, we will feed Steven right after. And now I'm gonna pour my buttermilk in here. Again, there are scrapers. I have some amazing scrapers from Pampered Chef, but because my hands are already dirty, I'm just gonna use those. Um, and then I'm just gonna mix this. Now I'm using a little wooden spoon. Actually, it's a little fork that I have. And you're gonna make this until it is a, a ball of dough. Another key element to biscuits, and I've heard it more than once, you never want to overmix biscuits because if you overmix them, they become very tough. Um, and no one wants to eat tough biscuits. You want light and flaky and buttery yumminess is what you want. So uh, this is pretty much like a dough ball for me. I will probably add a little bit. It's a little bit sticky. Things that you make with sourdough, tend to be a little on the stickier side, just to tell you. So I'm gonna turn this out on my mat here. And I'm just gonna roll, it says to knead about, oh, four or five times. I just do it so that there's no cracks in the top of it. Um, so that it's kind of all one, there we go. It also says to roll it out to about a half inch thickness. If you use, now I have these awesome biscuit cutters, again, you know where they're from. Um, I will link a lot of the Pamper Chef stuff below just in case you wanted to order some. I'm sure there's other products out there with other companies, but I love my Pamper Chef stuff more than anything. So 
Um, it says to roll them out about a half inch. Again, I eyeball a lot. These biscuit cutters come in four sizes. So if you wanted mini biscuits, you could do those. A two and a half inch is the recipe. The recipe calls for, it makes a dozen, but it calls for the two and a half inch circle. We like biscuits. So we use this one, which I think is a four inch. I could probably measure it on here, huh? One, two, three, four, it's what it is. Um, and I just cut out my biscuits. Easy peasy. I've already greased my pan. I use this awesome coconut oil. It's an organic extra virgin coconut oil. I got it online. I will also link that below too if I can find my my links. Um, and then I just put these on here. I put six on a, I try to get six on a tray. Um, and then I bake them at 425 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes until they're kind of brown. Um, I do use wheat flour because it is a little better for you than say the refined white all-purpose flour. Um, but I will tell you it is hard. It's a little hard to tell when things are done because they're already brown. So you kind of really just have to watch. I'm going to try and get two more out here. I might make two smaller ones. Um, last night I we made these for beet stew last night and I actually made uh, one smaller one. There we go. And I don't like to waste any of my dough. See, this one I will just do by hand. <laughs> Only because it is, it's like almost the perfect size. So, ah, so, okay. Now after that, what I usually do, because sourdough doesn't rise, say like yeast does, I like to let things sit for a while. So I will actually put this in the on, I'll sit it in the oven, on the bottom oven, that's not on. I take a wet rag, this rag, rag is actually warm and wet, and I will throw this over top so that they have a little bit of time to rise and, and get a little bit of poofiness to them. Um, and then after about maybe 20 minutes of sitting like this, I will stick them in a 425 degree oven for the 15, 12 to 15 minutes, depending upon your oven. You, you really need to watch because some ovens are different. So, you know, it may cook in 10 minutes and it may take 20 minutes. So you just gotta kind of watch them. And then we tend to serve it with butter or we serve them with like um, homemade jams. And I will post a picture of that somewhere, probably Instagram, um, which links to my Facebook. So you can look on there for the finished product. Uh, at, how we eat them and I will it will be on a uh, with my jam I'll show you my jam as well um, after they sit for the 20 minutes I do melt some butter I take a basting brush and I actually baste the top of them with butter because how much butter is too much butter there's no such thing so I will put butter on top of them and then I will bake them so thank you guys so much for joining me today if you make biscuits at home comment below click the little arrow the thumbs up that says yes you make them um, and yes you like this video I'd love to know if you do something a little different if you change something or if you use different products I'd love to know how you make your biscuits um, biscuits have always intimidated me so I'm curious to see what you think about your biscuits thanks again for joining the faithful farmer mama and I look forward to seeing you next week in our three videos biscuits are done proofing I'm getting ready to take them out. They have butter on top. And this is our final product. Baked biscuits fresh with peach jam.